What's going on guys and welcome back to another video or if you are new here, welcome to my YouTube channel. Now I know I have been gone for the last couple of months. I haven't uploaded many videos. I did do one in the last two months, but today we are back and we're working on the Tundra again. Now I'm super excited. I got an awesome switchboard for my pod lights and then I'm gonna get my light bar reinstalled and wired up. So we're gonna have a super nice switchboard inside the truck that we can turn them off and on with. So today I wanted to show you guys what switchboard switchboard I went with and how we're going to install it. So let's jump straight into today's video and let's see what we picked up. So this right here is an RGB switch panel from Oxbeam. We went with the six gang multifunction so we'll have six different buttons. I went with RGB because I really wanted the lights to be red. They did offer basically every other color but red in the non-RGB version. So this one did cost a little bit more, but you can get like four switches, six switches, eight switches in lots of different colors. So opening up the box here, we've got our awesome stickers for the switch panel itself. We'll throw those off to the side and then let's take a look at the panel in all its glory. Check that out. So this thing is super great quality. They have very high ratings, so I wanted to try it out. I did do a cheaper version of one of these on my last truck, not this Tundra. So this time I spent a little bit more money to get something a little nicer. So this guy right here is going to be where we power everything. So you can see it's got some fuses, some places to put positive and negative wiring outputs, our battery terminal connectors, and of course the wiring for that switch panel and one other thing. It does include all the wiring for it and a relay under there, and of course some brackets underneath. That way we can mount this thing securely. Now this kit is super awesome. It shows you how to mount it and how we need to wire up everything. So you can see here, we've got our ECU, we'll call it, for the Oxbeam switch panel. We've got our negative to the battery, positive to the relay, then to the battery. And then right in here, we've got our power and ground that goes to the panel itself. And of course, we connect this one to the car so that when we turn the ignition, it powers on. So let's go ahead, let's get started, and let's get this bad boy installed. So our first step for installing this Oxbeam panel is we need to come to our pod lights, make a nice little wiring harness that's going to connect there and have room to get down to where we're gonna put the motherboard of the panel, which I'm probably thinking is gonna go on top of the fuse box there. So you can see our pod light is mounted on our hood here. It comes down through underneath. It's gonna to connect to our wire harness right in here. It's gonna run through this little gap and we have lots of extra wire that it's gonna run straight into there. Went ahead and did the other side. It's gonna run alongside this guy here and down to the panel itself there. And that's probably gonna be the second hardest part is getting that installed and connected up. Next, we're gonna have to go into the truck and actually mount the panel and get the wires to the panel itself, which we may have to go through our firewall for. So let's go ahead, let's get our pod lights all wired in, get their wires right over here, nice by the fuse box. We'll wire in the motherboard of the Oxbeam switch panel and then we'll get all that connected. Okay, now that we've got the two pod lights all wired up and ready to go, it's time to tackle the aux beam panel and motherboard. So they actually sent us some nice instructions that show us the layout of all the parts that are included. So pretty much you won't need anything extra. Everything that comes in the box is what you'll use and it should work out perfectly. So if we take a look here, our aux beam motherboard has power and ground on this side. So we need to run ground to the battery. We need to run power to our little relay switch here, or fuse switch, whatever you want to call it. And then from there, we run it to the battery. So they gave us two cables, nice and well made. We'll connect those two, that one to the battery in the truck. And then we'll connect that one to our negative and straight to the battery's negative. So from there, there's two pin plugs that are located here. This little one's gonna go to the fuse. You're gonna wanna put that one to like your radio. So whenever you start the car, this is going to power on. The next one is that bigger one here. That is going to get plugged in with this harness here and go through our firewall on the truck and then connect to this connector here. And that's gonna power on our actual switchboard. So they do include everything to tap into the fuse 
to go to the fuse here, tap into the fuse, the switchboard power and wire harness there, the other wire harness is there. So it's really just plug and play with the instructions located there. So the hardest part is going to be where do we mount our motherboard and then again in the truck, where do we mount our aux beam switchboard? So let's go take a look at the truck and see what we can see. So it does come with a bracket that we can use to mount the motherboard in here, but I'm kind of leaning towards some 3M tape onto our fuse box cover. I have seen that done a few times on other vehicles and I think it's going to work out perfectly in our favor. So we're gonna clean off this fuse panel. I got some 3M adhesive tape. We're gonna throw on the back of that motherboard and we're just gonna stick it on there. So now that that's figured out, we wanna go ahead and get everything else wired up. All right, before we get too far ahead of ourselves and getting that motherboard all mounted up, we have to find out where to put this guy into one of the fuses. So what I've done is I drilled a tiny little hole just big enough for the wire to go in. I found the fuse. So we've got our fuse connector. We're gonna plug it into the correct fuse. We're then gonna wire it up. So what we needed to do is pop our fuse box and find a fuse that was connected to the radio. That way when the car turns over, our aux beam will get power. So right down in here in the front, number 22, our rad number one, that is a part of our audio system. So we're going to tap into that fuse and then we'll plug that in to our motherboard and then our whole system should get power. All right, now that we've got our fuse box all wired in and our wire hanging out, we went ahead and mounted the aux beam right there on top. We 3M adhesive taped the back of it and check that thing out. Just the fuse box rattling, that thing is not going anywhere. So there is a big opening right here. That's where we want our wires to run through and come out the bottom. So we did make sure that you can see my fingers come through it there. So we still want access to that. Ooh, almost got stuck. But now we can start wiring everything up putting the cover back on, and then plugging in the switchboard inside. All right, with the motherboard all installed and adhesive down, that one's all good. We went ahead and did like the fuse or relay or switch, whatever you want to call it. That guy is down there, not going anywhere. So our positive's gonna come off of here, loop down, around, connect here, connect here to the battery. That's gonna keep everything safe. So now that those two are down and in place, we can just start wiring up all of the wires and getting everything installed. So let's go ahead, let's wire everything in. We'll show you guys the finishing look and how it looks, and then we'll go from there. All right, now that we've got the motherboard and the relay in there, we went ahead and we wanted to get the power into the truck. So what I did is I ran the cable that connects to the aux beam back through the firewall. You can kind of see right here. We got it out through the truck. And now we have our connector cable right here in the truck. This is going to plug into the switchboard so that inside we can control which lights are on and off. But unfortunately, you can kind of see the dark clouds coming. It's been thundering. So we're gonna call it for right now. Because we're working with electrical stuff, I don't wanna do it in the rain. Just doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So as soon as it stops raining or if it never does rain, We'll jump back on this project. So I'll check back with you guys in just a few seconds. All right guys, really quick, I have to interrupt today's video to show you this graphene ceramic spray from Shine Armor. Now it's super simple to use and I know if you're anything like me, you like to keep your guys' car cleans. So let's check out this product and let's give it a good review. So spray the product into your microfiber towel and then rub onto the paint. Let it sit for one to two minutes and come back and buff it off. Then give it about four hours to cure and then you're all set. Take a look at that. The water runs right off and beads up nicely. Now I can't lie to you guys, I do have five plus years in the auto detailing world. And for being a ceramic coat spray, I do think Shine Armors is pretty good. For a little under 20 bucks, and with my coupon code, which we'll put right here, you guys can save 20% off your order. It's not a bad gig. Now if you guys are looking for a ceramic coat spray, definitely check out Shine Armor. They do have lots of other automotive detailing products. I'm going to leave a link in the description and my coupon code, so definitely check it out. Save 20% off, and thank you to Shine Armor for sending out the product 
and hooking you guys up with that 20% off coupon code. Now let's get back to the content. All right guys, it is the next morning. We are back at it, getting this aux beam switchboard all wired up. Today is gonna be super easy. It's literally just plugging in the power buttons and then making sure it works. So let's go ahead, I'll show you guys how we get everything plugged in to the motherboard and then we'll get the switchboard plugged in. We'll get some power running to it and let's check out and make sure these pod lights work. So now our final steps are to get our switchboard completely wired in. We pulled this portion through the firewall yesterday. Now that's good to go. We're gonna plug this in. We're gonna plug into our fuse box here. Then we need to get our pod lights wired into one and two. So we'll show you guys how to get that done. After that, it's just getting our positive and ground wires all connected up to the motherboard here. And then we should be able to use our switchboard to turn off and on our pod lights. All right, so in number one, we've got our left pod light. Number two, our right pod light. I made this wire just a little too short. I did want it one, so I'll probably just remake that little wire harness and attach it here and switch those so that I can have the right on one and the left on two. We've got our positive all routed over to our little switch relay thing. Then it runs to the battery. We've got ground coming out to ground. We've got our two plugs plugged in now. This one's in the fuse box. This one's inside the cabin with the aux beam switchboard. So before we start covering up and managing all those wires, let's go test it to make sure it works. You can see we've got power now on here. So let's go ahead, let's hit on and nothing. Okay, so we need to turn the key on, I believe. Oh, look at that, I already forgot. One was the left pod light and it is on. So I'm gonna go ahead, clean up the wires check in with you guys and then let's take a look and see how this bad boy looks. Now because I got the RGB version, I did get Bluetooth capabilities. So you can see I can change the color to whatever I want it to be. And I can actually turn them off and on with the mobile phone right here. So it's actually kind of nice to have. We all know I'm gonna be rocking red right there because I am a big black and red fan. Now obviously the last step would be to mount the aux beam switchboard somewhere. I'll probably grab some more 3M adhesive tape maybe stick it on something like right here or on the other side of the steering wheel. That is still TBD. I do want to find a nice clean place and then I'll do some wire management there to get it all nice and clean. But I think that's going to wrap up today's video. All right guys, that's going to wrap up today's video. I am super happy with the Oxbeam product. I think that it is great quality and it is super easy plug and play to install. I am no wiring specialist or any means like that, but the plug and play kit made it super easy to get everything Everything dialed in. Now I'm super excited to add the light bars to the front bumper, to the rear, all sorts of places, and to have a nice switchboard that I can turn them off and on with. So if you guys are in the market and are looking for one, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. So I definitely recommend you guys check it out. Don't forget, we have a 1,000 subscribers giveaway going on right now. We are so close, only 25 more subscribers, and we are going to be giving away a toolbox with tools that you can keep inside your truck or car so that anytime you break down or you go out to the track you're going to have a set of tools on you to help you out so smash that subscribe button so you guys can get entered and we'll see you guys next time peace